ML Bean boots have become synonymous with scarves, pumpkin spice lattes, fall Instagram posts, but that couldn't be more different than their original purpose that they're designed for. So today I'm gonna to cut some in half to find out the truth of what's inside of them and see if they retain the original quality of that hardworking hunting boot or if they become a piece of fast fashion. And thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about their best sell of the year later in the video. Today's video was supposed to be the NYX boot that I've been teasing all week that's gonna be really interesting, but I asked NYX to let me postpone it a few more days to next Thursday so I could kind of finish it the way I want to because it ended up being the most uh, ambitious and fun video I've, I've done to date. And if you don't wanna miss that, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And if you are, thanks for your support and consider liking this video if you like it. So the history of this boot is, it's pretty interesting. So back in 1911, Mr. L.L. Bean himself designed this boot after coming home from a hunting trip and being sick of having soggy socks every time he got home. So he came up with the idea of combining the waterproofness of a rubber boot and the breathability and uh, comfort and support of a leather boot. So he went to a local cobbler and basically asked him to combine the two boots. He did an initial run of 100 boots, but unfortunately it wasn't a great initial success because out of the 100 boots that they made, 90 of them failed. So Mr. L.L. Bean, I'm trying not to call him Mr. Bean, Mr. L.L. Bean refunded all the money and went to the U.S. rubber company and convinced them to make a custom rubber outsole. And then from there on, it's kind of just been one of the most successful and one of the most iconic boots in the world and has remained relatively unchanged 100 years later, over 100 years later, 109 years, almost 110 years. So a pretty cool history and I, I gained a new appreciation for these boots after knowing that history and, and knowing that he was the original designer of this style of boot. So now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is L.L. Bean. The model I got is the eight inch thinsulate version. And there's tons of different versions with different types of linings and um, insulation. Um, but I just happened to get this one because I thought it'd be interesting to see kind of how it was structured. I got the tan upper with the brown rubber bottom. These ones retail for $159, but the base model is $139. They weigh one pound, seven ounces, and they're made in Maine, USA. And I've seen these boots quite a bit for my entire life. Like they've basically been in style for certain groups of people forever. Um, but I had no idea that these were made in Maine and started in Maine and still are made in Maine. And I thought that was really cool because I feel like these out of any boot that I've cut in half would be the easiest to move to overseas production because of how simple they are. So I really respect the fact that Ella Bean is still making their boots in Maine. And they actually have a really cool video of going through the entire process that I'll put in the description that you guys should check out. Cause it's really cool to see how all of the, all the individual parts of this boot are made. So now let's go over everything that we can gather about this boot before cutting in half, starting with the leather. So this leather is a 2.4 millimeter chrome tanned leather that's a full grain, but it has a little bit of a pigment filler on the inside to give it probably more even finish and a more even uh, color throughout the various hides they use. It's surprisingly thick. I thought for this boot, it would be a little bit thinner. And this is 2.4 millimeters. It's a pretty common thickness of work boot leather. So to see it in this boot was surprising and really good to see. Next to the lining, so the leather part is unlined, but the rubber part has that insulated liner that's uh, olefin and polyester thin slit lining. The insert is a nice tight foam rubber insert that's topped with that polyester material you see in the lining. Next to the outsole, so this entire piece, this vamp and outsole is a, is a single piece of an injection molded rubber. And I did a little durometer test on it. It comes in at 58, so it's pretty soft rubber. And that's to be expected to have a little bit softer rubber, especially with this upper vamp area needing to flex and move pretty easily, especially when it gets cold. Then to the construction. So the upper leather part is glued with what I think is a, a contact cement and triple Puritan stitch all the way around. So a pretty solid construction. And the, the thing that's really interesting about these boots is how they're resold because L.L. Bean offers a resale service that's pretty affordable. I think it's only about 50 bucks to have them resold. And literally all they do is cut these stitches, remove the upper and sew it on a brand new rubber bottom. So it's a pretty simple resale process that makes it pretty affordable to really get the longevity out of these boots. And then as for sizing, the sizing is kind of all over the place because there's so many different versions of this boot. So I would just really pay attention to the sizing information for whatever boot you're interested in because it, it really does vary depending on the lining and the insulation you choose for whatever boot you're trying to get. And then finally, before we cut them in half to the look of these boots. So 
I wasn't a huge fan of these boots until I actually got them in hand and tried them on and I, I they've really grown on me. If I were to buy a pair for myself, I would probably get a darker colorway because this is pretty synonymous with like the scarf wearing, latte drinking, Instagram posting ladies and men, I guess, that wear these. So I'd probably go with more of the main Hunter. It's their hunting ver boot version that has a little bit darker leather for the upper. But overall, I think they're a pretty good looking boot. And uh, now let's cut them in half after we talk about Simply Safe. There's almost always a rise in break-ins during the holidays. That's why Simply Safe is having their best sale of the year. You can get 30% off and a free HD camera with the purchase of a new system. Simply Safe is a great home security system to keep your home safe, or in my case, my shop safe. Just order online or over the phone. It's delivered right to your home, and you can have it set up in your home secured in under an hour. And once you're set up, your home's professionally monitored 24 seven. And if anything does happen, they'll make sure the police are called. They've got sensors to cover every window, room, and door, plus lots of great little extras like water sensors, temperature sensors, and HD cameras. It's all really easy to use and you get around the clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts. And for me, ever since we moved the shop down to Salt Lake, I've been trying to figure out a way to secure the shop and make sure no one breaks in. And so when Simply Safe was interested in sponsoring this video, I jumped at the opportunity. And the setup was super easy. It literally took me probably 20 minutes to get it set up. And the thing I really liked about the setup was each piece of equipment has its own little instructions on the backs and little tips like you can see on the back of this little motion sensor. And once it's set up, you're good to go. And if anything does happen, the monitoring system calls the police to make sure it's taken care of. So visit simplysafe.com slash roseanvil to get 30% off your system and a free HD camera. Check them out via the link in my description. Okay, we got them cut in half. Let's see what's inside. <laughs> so this ended up being a lot harder to cut in half because this outsole is a lot thicker than I expected. It's at least twice the thickness as the cheap Walmart ones, and it's a lot harder to cut through. I don't know if it's the hardness of the rubber or if it's just this a specific compound. And I like cutting certain boots in half with a knife because I like to really get a feel of how hard it is to cut in half. And probably the thing that I like most that surprised me the most was that this heel block is a solid piece of rubber. In a really hard rubber, it's good to see voids in the, in the sole because it lightens the boot up a little bit and it gives you a little bit more squish on that harder rubber compounds. But because this comes in at 58 on my durometer tester, 
you know, you're gonna wear this heel out pretty quick and if you had voids in there, you'd wear into those voids fairly quickly. Now let's go through the layers and kind of identify what they, what they are. And there's really not a whole lot to this boot. So starting with the outsole, you got that injection molded rubber outsole. And then on the inside of the outsole, you can see the shank in there, which is, is good to see, especially with any boot with the heel. You've got this, this little knit stuff on the inside. And, if, and I think what this is for is the way that they injection mold it. They, they need a layer that allows the mold to release uh, pretty easily. So I think that's the purpose of that. Then you go up to the olefin and polyester insulated lining that's puritan stitched to the upper. And then you've got this unique little flap here. There's no counter, so it's not a counter cover, but I think what it does is it prevents you from getting a lot of heel slip because it's, it's that flesh out leather. But strangely, it's just kind of glued, little tack glued to the heel there, to the lining. And I, I'm not sure if anyone has had any issues with that, but it, like the insole does sandwich it, so I doubt you'd have any issues with it but I thought it, it was kind of weird that it was just glued down. But if no one's had an issue with it in the last 100 years, why change it? So then moving up to the upper leather, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So pretty simple. So now let's go through the pros and cons of this boot. Pros, obviously the waterproofness of this, of this rubber bottom. I, I'm not really sure how waterproof the stitching is. You know, I'm not sure if they actually treat it with anything, but I, I would assume that after a while of wading in water, that water would seep through this. So I guess we'll see in the finale video where we, we're gonna dunk these in tanks of water to see how long it takes to wa for water to seep through here. To me, one of the biggest pros that these are, is that these are still made in the United States. You know, I'm kind of a sucker for products made in the United States. So after 110 years, these still being made in the US, in Maine, in the same place that they were invented, was, is, is pretty cool and a pretty, pretty big pro for me. And these are fairly affordable. You're probably paying a little bit for the L.L. Bean name, but not so much because they, they could easily sell these for significantly more and make a lot more money off them because we've seen it happen with tons and tons of brands. But, you know, I think with the handcrafted and the high quality materials, I've, I think it's a pretty fair price. Then to the cons. So anytime you have this much rubber in a boot, they're going to be a lot hotter and not as breathable. It, the leather upper does help with it, but I still think you're going to be a little bit swampy here if you're really sweating in these. And because it's rubber, it's not going to dry out nearly as quick. So you might have to wait a couple days if you really get sweaty in these. Otherwise, they're going to stink really bad. And maybe the last con that I can think of is because there's it's all rubber through the bottom quarter of the boot, there's not a whole lot of support there and it's pretty flexible. So if you're planning on doing any hiking or anything that you need support for a boot for, this might not be the greatest boot for you because now especially there's a lot of boot technology that can give you a breathable and waterproof boot for hiking or working in wet conditions. So overall, are these a cheap fashion boot or did they retain the original hunting inspired quality? So to me, I would say pretty clearly, these are still high quality because of the thicker leather upper, the solid heel block, the thick rubber. And if anything, they've probably gotten better with age with the advancement of rubber technology and leather technology. So it's kind of unfortunate that these boots have a little bit of a stigma because that stigma made me think I wasn't gonna like these boots before the review, but now that I've actually reviewed them, it's, it's they're kind of like a pumpkin spice latte in the way that um, I made fun of them and the people that bought them until I actually tried them. And now I shamelessly love them and drink them all the time. So these are kind of the pumpkin spice latte of the boot world in my opinion. And I think that stigma shouldn't dissuade you from trying these out and getting a pair because especially some of those darker leathers, they're, they're pretty cool looking. And I actually like the way these look on my feet. So let me know what you guys think. And if you've had a pair of these, let me know your experience with them and your thoughts on this video. And Thursday is that crazy Nick's video that I'm super excited for and Next Sunday will be the Sperry Duck Boots. So thanks for everything you guys do. See ya.